love my little greenhouse. But last winter, the plastic ripped when I tried to remove the snow on top of it. I was trying to lighten the load. A few weeks later, the corrugated fiberglass panels cracked and blew off. The plastic is from leftover building materials and is unsuitable for a greenhouse. It has simply reached its end of life. I knew it was not UV resistant when I installed it 12 years ago, but I still can't believe it lasted this long. The original fiberglass panels are probably more than 30 years old. In this video, I will tell you all the stories of my first greenhouse, including where I found it and how I installed it in my garden, which has a good slope. And in a future video or videos, I will try to fix and improve this greenhouse. After using cold frames for many years with success, I wish I could have more headroom inside them so I could grow taller plants like tomatoes and let them reach for the sun and have more room to grow. In the back of my mind from day one of moving here, I always knew I would one day have a greenhouse. If you only have cold frames and enjoy their benefits, imagine if you can walk into one. Ooh, it's warm. I found and bought this greenhouse on Craigslist at a very reasonable price back in 2011. Ooh. When I saw it, it was just a pile of aluminum and deteriorating fiberglass panels that had seen better days. It's all there. There you go. Thanks. Hmm, how should I do this? <laughs> As soon as I decided on the ideal spot for this greenhouse, I covered the area with black plastic to kill the vegetation. Then I dug a shallow trench 4 to 6 inches deep by 12 inches wide and refilled it with rocks. The rocks will minimize rot on the wooden foundation. I used 12 inches long galvanized nails to nail the 4 by 6 lumber pieces together. However, the wood cracks easily with these big nails, especially at the ends. So I drilled pilot holes first to prevent the wood from cracking when nailing. Unlike screws, nails work by friction. So if the pilot holes are too big, there won't be enough friction to keep everything in place. I was mindful of where I nailed to avoid nailing into other nails already in the wood. As I built up the second layer, I staggered the lumber and nailed them all in place. I drilled more pilot holes throughout the whole structure. This time, the holes went all the way through the wood completely. I used 5 8 inch diameter rebars as nails or anchoring spikes. I ground the tip of the spikes into the same shape as the nails using a handheld grinder. The pointy tip made the hammering process easier. The rebars were at least twice the length of the foundation height. They are also not perpendicular to the ground. These various angles provide maximum holding strength for the foundations to the ground. Like in woodworking and carpentry, this is common practice when nailing things together. It makes them hard to pull apart. Each foundation corner resembles a finger joint, making them solid and stable. I looked so young back then, but I will probably say the same thing 12 years later, looking at the pictures I took today. Most greenhouses, unless custom made, must be installed on a level and square footprint. So I used the tape measure and level to ensure my wooden foundation was square and level. Check out this video if you're interested in how I did that. It's an important step. Instead of looking like this, I want it to look like this. 
the most challenging part of the construction was over. The rest was just like putting together a puzzle. But with a little study in my head, I saw how all the pieces should fit together. I used some wooden bracing to keep them plumped while assembling. It was like building a ribcage skeleton starting with the spine and then followed by the ribs. The original fiberglass corrugated panels were not in good shape. I decided not to use several pieces of them. Instead, I replaced it with some leftover poly or vapor barrier from a construction project. The poly lets in way more sunlight than the fiberglass panels, which are needed. I made a walkway inside, which also simultaneously created two beds automatically. And here comes the first load of topsoil. I was so excited. Please give me a thumbs up if you like my video. Or even better, subscribe to see me overhaul this greenhouse to its former glory. You may be watching this video because you want a greenhouse, but you may not be ready yet or don't have the space. I highly recommend having a cold frame first. I learned a lot from my cold frame before having this greenhouse. And you can check out the step-by-step -step video of my cold frame design. It worked awesome. 